We started too early. Now I get to see what happens before I turn my head to the right and look behind the car. <laughs> um, <coughs> excuse me. Made some progress on Vexus. Probably need a better name for it. It now has a mechanical button set thing, 3D printed bit. Uh, makes the buttons much easier on the fingers. I had the same experience with the with the pocket chip and uh, as I'm working on this I actually have a um, M5 stack brick playset thing uh, on the on its way and that thing is gonna be pretty interesting um, technically well actually almost all the code is gonna port uh, the display code is gonna be a little different obviously but uh, I, uh, I could probably do a better job of you know, rewriting the display code is probably a good idea anyways. Um, I got a little... I got a little hacky, but I added a bunch of features. And uh, the most recent, and the, the one that I'm, I'm proudest about, I guess, is uh, the search function. Um, because I had to do... It's like the uh, Helltech libraries have uh, display libraries and stuff like that. They have things already created um, that make some of this stuff easier. It's 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 standard uh, abstraction layer stuff. Um, by adding the additional layer of abstraction, it made it a bit easier for me to process any text inputs. Uh, but it added the difficulty of if I want to do individual highlighting on certain sections of it, I need to dig into the library, <laughs> figure out where the cursor is, how to query where the cursor is or where it should be and then select that area and then reprint the inverted character on that selected area so it, you know anytime things get easier it's a uh, it, it's guaranteed to get harder in some other way the question is will you run into that limit um, uh, note on the uh, blended coffee on the butter coffee when you blend it if the head is too thick or if it starts to separate use less butter or ideally more coffee I got that happening a, a few times and uh, I realized I needed to dial it back uh, so there is a specific there is a pretty there is a ratio that needs to be maintained otherwise it starts to separate uh, almost immediately <laughs> Um, and then you're back to the same problem. But if you do get the blend correct and it does pour nice and liquidy and the head is liquidy, um, like the, the head should pour into the cup when you pour it out. If the head stays back and the, the liquid pours out, then it's, it's too much butter. Add, add more coffee. Always add more coffee. Uh, <clears throat> but if you do do that, then you can add ice because if you've got the mixture right then you can add ice without it separating uh, but if you're if you're anywhere close to that threshold when you cool it down it'll start to separate again so so don't do that maintain a an appropriate mixture i'll probably have to figure out how much butter per cup and all that uh, or i'll just eyeball it or pour more coffee always more coffee anyways <laughs> so uh i had this and i've been I've been kind of weird about it because it has, um, it has the, well, first of all, I, I resolved one of the power problems. It, I just had a bad solder joint on one of the, uh, the battery connection points. Um, but it's, th that's the thing. Part of it, part of that is indicative of the problem that it has the Heltec, uh, uh, the Heltec board has this really weird battery connector, really weird non-standard battery connector. And if you go directly to the website and uh, diggle, diggle, dig through the, uh, oh, I'm looking at a, a sign that says, I love bubble tea. I do love bubble tea. I love uh, diggle, <laughs> diggle tea. Diggle dee dee. <laughs> what is going on? Okay. <clears throat> I might still be kind of tired. It's daylight. Ugh. Whatever. Humans, right? to go, oh, the sun's changing. Well, we have to control the sun. 
and control the time and control the date so we will quantify it and uh, says the engineer <laughs> we will quantify it and study it <clears throat> oh no it has become misaligned we must adjust it just just chill let the gradual change happen it'll gradually change it'll gradually change back no no it must be jarring jump ahead an hour jump back an hour good luck everyone <laughs> uh, the, one, of my, one of my favorite moments was uh, getting daylight savings time um, after our first uh, baby and I was like oh I get an extra hour of sleep and you go to sleep and then <laughs> the baby wakes up an hour early and you're like uh actually baby it's an hour early oh she doesn't know what time is <laughs> you're like I no longer have daylight savings time and talk about that <laughs> How about that as far as uh, controlling controlling things? Like, oh, we, we will control time. We will adjust time to better fit our, uh, our, our needs and desires. And the baby's like, I don't know. I don't care. I'm going to cry anyway. <laughs> Nature. <laughs> this is the way the Lord intended it. Just, just be chill. Right. So, yeah, the Helltech thing. <clears throat> Battery issues were resolved. Uh, I'm remarkably organized right now. Uh, this is my brain being organized. Uh, all right, the health, uh, the battery issues were resolved. The battery adapter is very strange. I'm not quite sure, uh, but I'm also not sure if I want to standardize on the Helltech because it uses non-standard libraries. That said, the Adafruit libraries are gigantic and slow, but nice, well-featured. Uh, the other thing is, it's an ESP32, so it's 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 it'll handle it okay it's not it should not be a problem and that was the other thing that I had with this uh, since it's so big it's got all of this uh, it's got all the space in it it's got like eight megabytes in it and if you know anything about what a, what an actual byte is <laughs> that's a lot of data so uh, I have this uh, on the phone right there that's my phone <laughs> on the phone I have uh, some reference data that I use infrequently and it's saved in an org file, and uh, I use the phone app, uh, the Android phone app, Orgsly, O-R-G-Z-L-Y. If you use that in conjunction with um, Dropbox, you can sync them together and get your org files on your phone. I actually did a bunch of project management just using that tool uh, because everything was so plain text. I was able to do bulk updates on my computer, you know, with a full keyboard and everything. And then when I went out in the field uh, working on different devices or different computers at different stations, I had all of that reference data in the palm of my hand, totally searchable. Uh, and I was able to update it and save it and change status on the on the remote side of the file. Excellent, excellent tool. Uh, highly recommended. Um, but that some of that reference data is. Uh, it's infrequently accessed and uh, frankly should not be cluttering up my brain um, <clears throat> so it's it's just in my phone and if uh, you know whatever comes up you know think think about things like phone numbers phone numbers are you should probably memorize a few phone numbers but that's about it you know if you lose your phone you, you, you want to be able to call like your wife or your mom or something um, to be able to do that is kind of important uh, so the potential for having phone numbers stored in here or um, any reference data. Um, uh, I use password hints and reminders and stuff like that for things that I rarely log into. Um, I'm trying to think of other stuff that isn't too revealing, I guess, but you know, there's little things. Um, at least I expect there's little things. So it's, I don't know how people's, how other people's brains work, but mine just needs a little little prime on the pump and then I can remember something from like 20 years ago um, unless it's musical then I can remember it from 30 years ago <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I was like how much how much data can I put in here and how much like how accessible will this data be I did not publish I don't think I published the I think it's unlisted. I, I uploaded a video about. Uh, I did a blog post about this. I did a video about the um, uh, the medium uh, and selection, choosing the medium, the appropriate medium for your data or for your your information that needs to be stored. Uh, <clears throat> and if I haven't up 
uh, yeah, I'll link it in the description if you want to read it or listen to it. It's it's uh, it's just talking about the different mediums and what the different mediums of data offer. You know, if you want to put data into a, a notebook, then that's great. It'll always be there, but it's not searchable. Also, it's not in the cloud. If you lose the notebook, it's gone forever. It's not backed up in multiple places. <clears throat> Similarly, I can have something like this and have that data be stored uh, here, but if it's in uh, SV or SRAM, and the thing reboots, then it's gone. Uh, but if I store it inside that electronic device, then it's there. I can also hard burn data into it, or you know, program it with data uh, that goes into the uh, the flash area, and I'm using the wrong word here, but the hard memory, and then I can power off that device and leave it somewhere, and then as soon as I power it on, I'm able to access all of this information again without maintaining uh, battery state. So, <clears throat> that idea of having the reference data there and accessible is great, but the limiting factor is, of course, this uh, this quite tiny screen and how I'm not going to be able to leaf through um, kilobytes of data <laughs> in order to find what I'm looking for. So the object was to get some kind of search feature going, and uh, I have never written anything like that in... Uh, woo, in C, uh, although I haven't written much of anything in C, or I guess this is C++ technically, but whatever. I'm mostly using all the C stuff. <laughs> um, some C++ where it affects, where it impacts readability or reduces uh, reduces cruft uh, syntax. Uh, but I was thinking about it, and I'm like, well, how much data can I fit in this? And I just dumped the whole file. I had to, you know, refact refactor. I had to re... I had to jiggle the data a little bit to get it to be in a format that would be acceptable uh, to be imported. Uh, but once it was imported, it, it all uploaded just fine. It all fit just fine. And I'm like, all right, let's uh, let's try my hand at a search routine. And uh, I thought about it for a bit. <clears throat> I, I probably thought about it for 15 minutes and wrote about it for 30 minutes. And then by the time I was done, uh, it was it was a little under an hour, uh, and it, it worked. And it worked perfectly. And I was like, you know, I, I, it's, it's there's probably a few uh, <laughs> a few CPU cycles I could shave off of it, but yeah, it's a <laughs> it's an ESP32. It, it's not a problem. Um, I was just uh, kind of amazed that it worked, and uh, that's you get. And when you're uh, when you teach yourself everything, there's, there's always a little bit of imposter syndrome. And from what I understand, it's this industry is uh, is heavy in imposter syndrome. Um, <clears throat> and I find that interesting because there's a lot of uh, not duplication of work, but uh, adapting of work or inspiration of work, which I find uh, it seems like it's something that would also apply to something like artists, where you're you're taking something that's creative and you're borrowing uh, aspects from someone else, or in the case of programmers, you're literally taking code from someone else, uh, <clears throat> even if you never have to modify it or anything. <clears throat> but the, uh, there's, there's always a little bit of, you know, it's like, eh, I'm, I'm really just, uh, I'm just a script kitty, I'm just hacking around at this code until it works. And then you do something like that, and you're like, yeah, that was, even I'm impressed by that, actually. Troy, good job. It's, here's a here's a rare pat on the back from me, um, because I'm actually kind of hard on myself. <clears throat> so, you know, for, for what it's worth, I can, whatever I can try to think or whatever I can imagine of myself, I can still say, well, remember that time you wrote that search routine that worked great the first time in C? You know, I haven't, I haven't had to think about things in terms of, uh, actual actual bytes of memory and uh, it worked and with a few <clears throat> that was the thing is like after I could do the search I was like all right now now that I can do the search I want to make it so that I can flip directly to that item and then I just kind of I don't know I, I did I did what I normally do and I'm like what if I do it like this I don't think that'll work but what if I add this here then if I track it as a relative position, and then I'm like half thinking, this is a strange thing. I'm like, 
It's like I'm starting without knowing how I'm going to finish, but then I finish faster than I expected. And then it's like, yeah, that was impressive. Like, what? How how did you do that? <laughs> Is, uh, there's some hind brain that's working out this uh, this problem, uh, but it's you know it's it's neat. And now, well, that's the point. Is now I can I can search all of that reference data uh, based on tags, uh, search which items match uh, a phrase or a word or a section of text really, and then flip through those matches and then choose that one and then get flipped back to the full document that has all of it, you know, kilobytes of data. And then choose the one uh, that it'll it'll already be on the one that I had chosen from the search feature. And there's there's a few parts that are inelegant. There's some duplication of code that could be combined, but no, it's it's just it was it was quick. All right, this is not about me. It's actually just about Vexus, though. It's so I've got like recipe data and stuff like that and I can search all that and and flip through all of these these text entries and uh, it's it's cool um, let me see if I can remember what else I did here at well it was really just that I think I added the search feature to the notes and then I was like well that worked surprisingly <laughs> like why don't I add it to the reference data like well that worked like well how do I view more data out of the reference data like if it if it scrolls off the screen like, well, I'll make a separate subroutine that just, just displays the text and then extend it so I can flip through it. And then it's like, oh, well, this all works. What the hell? <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know. I, I don't know how much I know, which I've said before. So uh, I guess I don't know what the point is. This is probably just reassurance for myself <laughs> when I get imposter syndrome really bad later. <laughs> It, it's uh, kind of undeniable at this point, so you're a programmer, Harry.